this video is a continuation of my last uh, trip that I uh, finished in April so I showed you first day of my trip this is the second uh, day of my trip I'm sorry about the background noise uh, this is school we are backing up to school kids are getting ready to be picked up anyway um, the videos you're gonna see after this quick recap of my findings uh, tell uh, take us through um, in chronological order how I find those specimens uh, I started the day uh, in Wilberforce area and walking through the forest I found this uh, guy I am assuming this is um, black uh, zircon it appears to be zircon uh, bearing uh, rock you're gonna see this in the video correct me if I'm wrong but that would be great according to the no, uh, books that's what zircon the zircon can be found there uh, closer to the pit that everybody's looks for it's looking uh, in for molybdenite um, I found molybdenite, a few pieces, as you're going to see in the video. Also find uh, fluorite, which is interesting, so, uh, accessory mineral. And also, I'm not sure if this is blue apatite, but if not, it's probably another form of fluorite from there. Uh, before I got to the pit with molybdenite, I stopped, you're going to see in the video, and I pulled some um, uh, s some um, green uh, rocks from pyroxenite based um, rocks material so this would be an uh, example of that and I just forgot the name of it will come back to me in a second there's a few of them kind of gemmy even uh, crystals You know the stuff you find they f you find um, in a Grace Lake area and this is what I'm scratching my head uh, I don't know if you can see this but in a proper light you can see there is a veins of copper color metallic almost like a wire like material that comes through um, in a spiral ways all around that chipped rock this is again from the same area where molybdenite is so I wonder if there is a, a native copper there if somebody who knows that area can let me know if that's even possible that would be great find um, so these are these three minerals I'm gonna call this one David because I'm gonna show you some a Goliath but uh, these three or four findings are from Wilberforce area. I also stop very shortly at um, the fluorectorite occurrence, Essenville. This is not from that day, but this is, uh, shows you the, uh, how great those crystals are there at that road cut. And this leads me to the question, what is what makes a mineral specimen uh, beautiful? It's open to interpretation, but this one has everything for me. Uh, speaking of beautiful crystals, later on that day I went to Titanite Hill. Everybody knows that place, it's open to the public. And I found at the very beginning, crisscrossing the, the, the top of the bottom of the mountain, on the slab of calcite with protruding crystals of fluorectorite, fluorectorite, tomato, tomato, I don't know what do you guys call this mineral? It's a group of amphiboles, there are so many of them and they have all different names. If you go to a museum, ROM, you're gonna see them all, they all made named differently. They could be hornblends and mega something, magnesium ferrous, 
whatnot. So I pulled these guys out of this calcite blob just by soaking it in the water. And water does the trick, it goes into this calcite, goes to the cracks and then becomes more workable. I tried to hit it with the acid, but then I was worried that it may affect fluorectorite. So these beauties came out of it. These are floaters, basically, all around. Again, what makes specimen beautiful? Tell me, what do you think about that? This uh, makes a uh, mineral full, fully terminated. A little cute um, miniatures. It's another one here. But there's also this guy popped out of, of this calcite. I'm really proud of this guy because again it's it says everything going from a termination on top on bottom that turned green for some reason and basically they all stuck on each other beautiful organized columns of fluorectorite or some other amphibole if I'm wrong correct me in the comments again this this is really prized for me it looks a little better when it's wet like any everything else except my dog but you can see the the beautiful crystals here in the, so this is uh, all titanite hill and then in the video you're gonna also see I came upon the digging and I brought this baby home because I thought why not this is all floating crystal of feldspar and has everything as ugly as can be but it's everything on it is really excellent for for somebody like me who likes uh, the nature in its best so this thing goes like somebody just have some diseased bones and organs livers <laughs> whatnot but they are really dramatic looking specimens of minerals I found also this little higher in a mountain and the habit of a crystal is really intriguing. I'm wondering this may be tourmaline black dravite I believe it's called because of the triangle uh, shape. Tell me if you know. And one more tell me if you know is this. This was found again in Wilberforce area in a, um, where the molybdenite occurrence is. These are very wedgy, very sharp green crystals of, I don't know if it's diops, dioptase, perhaps, is that possible to be there, but I don't think that's the crystal habit of dioptase. So that's another question for comments if you have. So this leaves me with the question, what makes a mineral uh, specimen beautiful in your eyes? This is what I see beautiful, especially when they embed it in the mother rock. Enjoy the rest of the video when you're going to see me finding those, those uh, uh, specimens. And even this little false bar. That's a baby of a big mama. So they can be big and small. We love them all. Enjoy the rest of the video and subscribe to my channel if you like things like this well what do you know this is the second day of my trip um you can get a focus on this you can see this is black zircon i found them just kicking the rock on the ground it's attached to the matrix which is this black sugary pyroxene based rock I was wondering what that is but when I saw the point and shine and blackness of it that's a definite zircon you find them <laughs> when you don't expect them and I'm in uh, woods by uh, Wilberforce close to molybdenite occurrence beautiful so after I found the zircon uh, in that area somewhere really orientation is is not very 
important here because this looks all the same is uh, Wilberforce area. Uh, I found the pit here. You can see I'm kind of standing in it. Overburden rock was a pyroxenite uh, rich in um, tremolite. When it's uh, Grace Lake, when you have tremolite everywhere, obviously that rock was destroyed. Uh, pushed aside uh, it's really rich I found this calcite with this druzy reddish stuff around it I I heard about garnet here I'm not sure if this is garnet of course it's tremolite uh, in those veins and there's very interesting outcrop of mica which hides some other stuff I have to take it home and clean it and again uh, there's tremolite everywhere and even found a big chunk of quartz. If I put gloves on and knee pads, that means for my attention span is worth uh, digging. But this is only like 10 minutes of digging and basically all this overburden you see here is all pyroxenite based. There's no um, molybdenite here. I don't know if this is what they were looking for. Molybdenite is there in an old cut, which I'm gonna go in a minute. But if you're here, just walk around. You find those uh, indents in the ground with overburden of soil, and that's where those rocks are hiding. Anyway, see you in a second down there in the pit. So I just came from there to Glory Hall by Molybdenite. I call that Molybdenite Hell. Uh, what, what they dug out from that little 20 foot deep added is just this rocks. I don't think they even took any of it. Uh, somebody was here last year when I was here in April was flooded. So this bottom was flooded. So somebody went to town on 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 some of these peroxide rich rocks. They are green when they fresh, and then they become increasingly brown from pyrite, micropyrite crystals. So this I smacked already once, and of course inside there was a flake. Lots of brown ones. Don't discard them, thinking that there's nothing inside. Sometimes you see. Molybdenite sticking out that means that there is a probably very tiny crack when molybdenite actually uh, Deposited itself and some of them I just picked this one up I'm gonna show you it was a little deeper and Look at that. You just turn, turn it over and look at this amount of uh, Molybdenite here So I like to pick up a few pieces each year I'm here and trim them to small sizes. They're great for trading or giving as a gift to kids and things like that. So that's one of the places that always yields well. So somebody was here. Uh, great experience, no mosquitoes. So that, that's my stop towards Torrey Hill. Titanite Hill, obviously. Uh, the most popular place so I'm doing my spring um, first trip I just was canvassing the hill and I found this uh, calcite with lots of fluorectorites sticking out obviously nobody was banging on it They're everywhere so I'm gonna take it home and give him two week bath in there got a weak acid and get those crystals out it's a nice start it's kind of heavy I'm on the bottom of the hill I'm just zigzagging seeing what me miner and Jeff left behind and I'm gonna leave my backpack here on this rock and go up and see what's going on I'm gonna take you along for a little bit of development here it looks like somebody opened another 
a hole in pretty much in the middle of the hill and this one looks like it's right away um, yielding typical mineralization of titanite similar to the upper level vein but what <laughs> I can believe is somebody already discarded so I wonder what they took home these very well mineralized uh, amphibole groups this one is from calcite in calcite this one is kind of cool because it looks like those crystals of falspar they developed and they start floating in some kind of stew of other minerals because don't like the, don't like don't look like they are touched per se other than this cement like um, sugary black substance which is mostly amphibolite material but what steals the show here is this guy this is big chunk big crystal all around fully developed of Altspar with some amphibos. I think I'm gonna take him home because even if I don't think there is a shelf in the world that can support this but in a garden it would look like a trophy. So you never know what you're gonna get. I really appreciate all hard work of people who love to dig. I'm too lazy for this and I just take advantage and I walk behind them and take what they can take home. That's my truck somewhere there. Of course I went also up high to right corner over there where, where I picked up some micas and some green appetite. See you down there by the truck.